quite like this, because already I sense most of you are looking at me going, can he lift that? <laughs> right, it's going to come as a surprise to none of you when I tell you that I don't eat meat, is it? <laughs> Not a single one of you is going, what, big lad like you? <laughs> Although, you know, I don't want you to worry, because I know, I know full well that there are a couple of stereotypes about people that don't eat meat. One of them is that we are pathetic weaklings, and the other one is that we're quite sanctimonious and preachy, but you haven't got to worry about that. I'm not sanctimonious nor preachy, because it takes it out of me, to be honest. Uh, uh, I mean, there are downsides. Uh, I, have to, I have to get closer to automatic doors before the sensors detect me. Uh, but there are upsides, there are upsides. I have to get, uh, I, 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 right, I haven't aged in about 10 years. Right, it's true, I'm 28, right, I'm 28, and I know that I might not look 28, because if I looked 28, I wouldn't keep getting asked for ID for hay fever medicine. <laughs> I and mean, that's what happens, that's what happens. Uh, I, um, <clears throat> I, I, I should point out um, that I, I, I'm, I'm a married man, I've been married for a few years, uh, and when I, uh, why is that funny? <laughs> well, that's never happened before. <laughs> What normally happens is that I tell people, oh, I'm a married man, I've been married for a few years, and some people go, oh, are you sure? Look at your face. Whereas you just went, who would want to spend their life with you? I find that quite rude. Uh, what's that? Oh, no, it was, it was all right. We, I mean, obviously, you look like you're going to beat me up. So, Chris, you're a vegan? I am, yes, I am, yes. I'm one, I'm one of the few. <laughs> Um, how long have you been a vegan for? Uh, I've been a vegan for about uh, nearly nearly five years. Wow, that's cool. Uh, was it? I'm always fascinated by people who are vegans because I try I I like tried to do it, but then I just got dizzy. And, uh, and you weren't doing it right. I probably wasn't doing it right. Onion bhajis and salads is probably not the right way to do it. No, no, no. You need you need your vitamins. Uh, yeah. 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 And you can get them from food, right? I mean, can you get them from wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not from a pint glass, though. Is that part of your five a day? I don't think that was as classy as you wanted it to be, was it? I wasn't aiming for classy. Funnily enough, I never really am. I, I haven't got much of a social life. Right? I haven't got much of a social life. So I like it when I enjoy This is a great gig, and I love doing it. And uh, uh, I, I, It's nice when I enjoy it, because I've only got one friend, right? So that means I don't go out very often. <laughs> Ken, why is that funny? <laughs> yeah, that laugh there is you just going, yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> Uh, uh, to point out, the last time I went out socially, it was, uh, it was before I came up to the Fringe, uh, and it was with my best friend. It was to a gay bar, because my best friend is gay. And he said, come on tonight, we're going to go to a gay bar. And I thought, oh, OK, but we've already spent all day knitting. <laughs> but uh, I suppose it was only fair we did something he wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to patronise you, I'm not going to patronise you. I mean, it's the 21st century, so I imagine most of you have been to a gay bar before. It's just, so I'm not going to go, oh, well, maybe I'm meant to go. But it's just that where I'm from, there's only one, right? And what can happen is, is that the bouncers, if they don't recognise you, they can be a bit aggressive, because you could be a hostile element. You could be there to just cause trouble, right? So sometimes they won't let you in unless they think that you look gay. <laughs> I got in fine. And uh, <laughs> when I was in there, I had one person came on to me the entire night, right? It was a woman. And I, I find it quite hard to connect with people. And I, I never used to have very much luck with women. I used to lie in bed at night alone and think, I smell really nice. <laughs> but there was never anybody there to say, hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do smell really nice. I mean, that's quite a tragic thing to admit. I don't mean to worry about me. I've met somebody now, and she's great. She's really supportive of my little comedy thing, but I prefer it when she calls it my penis. <laughs> so, um, you, can, uh, <laughs> uh, now you can imagine my surprise that it's a game bar all places that a woman finally shows some interest in me, and my friend went, yeah, that's because she thought you were a lesbian. <laughs> And from my point of view, that always gets a slightly odd reaction, because uh, from my perspective, it sounds like you're all going, he does as well, look at that. Quick question, have you got any horrendous fringe stories, like really bad heckles or anything you can remember? Uh, not really bad ones. Uh, although a couple, of, a couple of days ago, because I, I hide in the wings uh, in, my, in my solo show, and I can, I can hear people chatting as they come in. And I heard one bloke just say to the usher, so is this the comedian thing? 
which put me in a, in a great mood. Um, there is a, there is another fridge that I can't tell. <laughs> yes, you can. It's all right. I uh, genuinely can't. Is it litigious? Uh, it is. It is. It, um, it involves somebody that I shared a flat with in 2007. Just make up a name. Uh, well, if she watches this, she'll know exactly who she is. Uh, but. Um, uh, Go on, I, what did she do? No, no. She, well, it annoyed me a little bit, so I started a rumor that. Um, got around um, uh, and I didn't realise it would get around because it was clearly a joke it was obviously a joke that was made up um, but it got back to me three years later <laughs> somebody went is it true that and I had to go and move it? I've recently moved house and where I moved house to they don't recycle cardboard they don't recycle coal that's not the whole story <laughs> it's just that I like recycling and I like to do my bit and when I found out they did recycle cardboard I thought I'm just going to have to go and take all this cardboard to the tip aren't I but I thought, oh, that's all right, because I've got some old power leads uh, from uh, broken laptops. I can recycle them when I'm there. I don't have to just throw them away. But if I had not seen them, this nightmare would never have happened. Because I, uh, I got to the tip, and I recycled the cardboard. It was easy enough, because it is. <laughs> right? Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, right? Recycling is easy, right? You know, you get people like Trevor, who are 89, and they ring into Jeremy Vine on Radio 2, and they go, Oh, it's too difficult. It's, I fought in a war. I flew planes over Germany while simultaneously operating weaponry and machinery. I cracked the Enigma code, but I can't work out these different coloured bins. <laughs> uh, well, look, I, shouldn't be too, I shouldn't be too down on Trevor, because when, um, when I recycled the cardboard, I put that into the correct bay, uh, an errant pair of socks that I hadn't noticed fell in with them. Right, and I, I didn't cry, but I was a bit sad, I was a bit mortified. Because <laughs> I'd broken recycling law, hadn't I? So I had a momentary lapse of concentration, and when I threw the power leads into their correct enclosure, I also flung my house and car keys. <laughs> right, now, that sort of thing would annoy you if it happened to you, but these things happened to me so often that it just rolled off me like water. I just watched them land, and I just went, yep. <laughs> of course. That's about right. <laughs> then I, I, didn't, I had to get them, so I went over to the porter cabin where all of the uh, all of the blokey blokes were. And I look, I'm not an alpha male. I was already on the back foot, right? So I went there and I went, oh, how many of me do you get a day? I've just thrown my house and car keys into bay seven. And he went, we don't get any of you. <laughs> Nobody has ever done this. Right? And he was sat next to a really sarcastic one, and the really sarcastic one went, yeah, because normally people like to hold on to their keys. I was like, oh, you, you're a bit of a dick, but I can't argue with you. And, uh, and as we were walking to where, my, where I throw my keys, the first one went, so, how have you done that? Right? Now, you know when you see yourself through the eyes of the person you're talking to, and you know exactly what they're thinking, right? I completely agreed with it. I've never sounded more stupid. I was just a blabbling idiot. I just wouldn't shut up. So when he said, oh, how have you done this? Right? I just heard myself saying, I don't, I think. I must have just let go of them. <laughs> and I, I wasn't trying to be a smart ass, I was being really earnest. Uh, and I just didn't shut up either. When we got to there, he tried to use a rake uh, to try and fish them out. And I went, oh, I don't know why I said this. I went, oh, it's a bit like one of those amusement arcade machines, isn't it, where you can't quite... And he said, yeah, but normally the teddy bears are in those because somebody hasn't dropped them in there by accident. <laughs> and uh, he couldn't do it, he couldn't do it. So uh, he had to jump down. And as he landed, I heard him say under his breath, it had better be a Bentley. Right? And I just cringed as he picked up and looked at the logo on the keys to my Nissan Micra. I just felt so emasculated. And he couldn't get out either. It took him ages, because they're quite high, those. And every lunge, I, I caught his eye. And it was just like, you are a pathetic excuse for a man. And uh, eventually, eventually he got out. Uh, but it was really undignified. He had to roll on the floor. Uh, and I just took my keys off him. Uh, and I thanked him awkwardly, and I went, thank you for doing that. Um, uh, and I sort of walked back, to, walked back to my car, and as I did that, I heard the second guy shout, Carl, some dicks put some socks in the cardboard bit. <laughs> Tonight and sat at the front completely on their own was a small, short, overweight goth person. And I, like every other person in this room, would naturally presume that that small, short, overweight goth person's sexual partner is a tall, thin goth person. Because <laughs> that's what every fucking goth couple looks like. Every single goth couple in the world looks like a satanic number 10. <laughs>
that being a midget at a sex club is like being a prized pig at a country fair. <laughs> Very popular. <laughs> and I'm no prude, obviously. You gotta do like the locals. <laughs> I ended up having sex with an eye doctor. I didn't know he was an eye doctor, just in the middle of sex. He was like, one finger or two, better or worse? <laughs> I 